This next uh, few lectures is uh, devoted to uh, um, two different topics, uh, first of which is the T distribution, which we'll get into soon, and the and hypothesis testing, which is the uh, first in a series of uh, topics on what we'll call uh, inferential statistics, or being able to glean conclusions from your statistics. So first we're going to go over uh, what a t-distribution is. Um, we've already been presented with a, a standard normal distribution or a, a, in using a z-table for calculating things. Um, and in general it works quite well if you have uh, sampling distributions with uh, uh, your sample size greater than 30. Um, a standard, standard normal distributions are uh, good for finding the probabilities that you need. Um, but what if uh, the, your sample size is less than 30 and uh, you don't know your population variance? Uh, do you have to use a different distribution? And I imagine from just by virtue of us talking about this, you know that we do. Um, and this is what the T distribution comes in for. And it's a very similar to a standard normal distribution and in fact um, uh, becomes normal as uh, the degrees of freedom in a, the s a set of data go towards infinity. Uh, now this does introduce a topic called degrees of freedom which I'll go over briefly but we'll cover uh, in more detail in subsequent uh, lectures but um, basically degrees of freedom are the number of independent observations in a data set. So for a t, dist in, uh, for a t distribution, it's always a n minus 1, or the sample number minus 1. Um, a good way to think about uh, degrees of freedom is, uh, for example, if you have a data set of 10 numbers and you're trying to calculate the mean of those 10 numbers, uh, there's a uh, number of degrees of freedom associated with calculating that mean. And the way in which you can quickly figure that out is to think to yourself, if I knew the mean, how many uh, how many of the original uh, observations would I need to know uh, in order to calculate the last one? So if I know if I know the mean of those ten numbers, I would only need to know nine of the individual op independent observations in order to get the tenth one. So just for calculating a mean, the um, degrees of freedom is n minus 1. And we'll get into that more. If that doesn't make sense immediately, it will soon in uh, subsequent lectures. And so, uh, so this, is what we're, this is what a t-distribution looks like for uh, varying degrees of freedom, which are uh, outlined uh, with uh, this Greek letter nu. And, um, so uh, with uh, uh, one degree of freedom, it's, it's still, look, as you can see, it looks quite normal, though the, um, the edges here don't fall off as quickly as a standard normal distribution towards the periphery here. But as you see, um, when you begin to increase the degrees of freedom, uh, it begins to look much more like a standard normal curve. Uh, and in fact, that makes sense because if we use uh, uh, with n's greater than 30, they actually, it's acceptable to use, uh, with the central limit theorem, acceptable to use the uh, z-table on a standard normal curve. So you can see that if we keep increasing our degrees of freedom, which is the same as, which is almost the same as increasing our n, we begin to approximate a standard normal distribution. And so uh, with uh, the t-distribution, t we also will use it for the same uh, test that we used for uh, a standard normal distribution. So we'll calculate, um, instead of a z-statistic like before, we'll calculate a t-statistic um, for uh, uh, using to begin to answer questions with those distributions. And the, uh, the t-statistic we use is actually very, very similar to what you see for a sampling distribution with the z-statistic, it's the value that you found minus the um, mean of the, uh, uh, the, the an observed mean 
divided by the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So here we'll begin to actually go over an example of uh, how to use t distributions in t statistics. And the example reads as, reads as follows. The mean adult weight of a breed of pig is 22 kilograms. Suppose a sample of 25 pigs has a mean weight of 24 kilograms with a standard deviation of 4.25 kilograms. What is the probability of another sample mean with n equal to 25 to be less than or equal to the mean of this data? So immediately we know that uh, we're dealing with an n of less than 30. Um, and we don't know our population variance, so we need to use a t-statistic for this. And so we uh, need to use t-distribution. So we calculate our t-statistic, and uh, our sample has a mean of 24 kilograms, and we subtract that from what is supposedly the known mean of 22 kilograms in the numerator, 24 minus 22. And then we divide it by the standard deviation of what we found uh, divided by the square root of the sample size, so 4.25 divided by the square root of 25, which is 5. And we find our t-statistic to, to be 2.353. Now what do we do with this? It's, uh, it's quite similar to what is used for a uh, z-statistic. Um, we you actually use a, a statistics table to figure out what the area under the curve or the probability associated with this value is. And so that's what's on the left here. It's a t-table, um, which you'll become more and more acquainted with uh, through the length of this course. Um, and so the way t-tables work is down the first column are the um, degrees of freedom you're working with, and across the top are tail probabilities. And so the first thing we want to do when reading this is try and try to figure out what degrees of uh, what degrees of freedom are we using. So first, where our n is 25, and so our degrees of freedom for this test, as we mentioned before, is n minus 1 for a t test. So we go down to n minus 1 or 25 minus 1 to 24. Okay. And then we try to find uh, uh, the within this this row now. We want to find uh, a value that's closest to what we found, 2.353. So we'll go across to the from left to right here till we find um, of the till we find uh, t statistics that are in the range of this 2.353. What we find are is that 2.353 lies between 2.712 and 2.492. Now, what are these associated with? You can see from the uh, uh, from the table here, from the the uh, illustration of a distribution up above it, that, for example, 2.712 or 2.172. Um, is the t critical value associated with an area under the curve of, if we draw our eyes up that column, 0 0.02. So that means that the area to the right of this t value is 0 0.02. You can see that from the shading. So whereas the standard normal table is area to the left of a threshold value, t critical values always read to the right. And so just to hammer it home a little more, uh, for degrees of freedom of 24, 2.492 corresponds to an area under the curve to the right of this value of 0 0.01. So it lies, so what we can say is that the probability of a sample mean being greater than 24 kilograms is somewhere between 0 0.01 and 0 0.02. So between 1 and 2% are your odds that you'll find a, uh, another 
sample mean that's greater than 24 kilograms. And that makes sense because if we use, let's just use this one, uh, this little distribution up here as an example. I'm going to try using my uh, uh, pointers here. So if our mean is right here, um, the adult, the mean adult uh, weight of this breed is 22, so we'll say 20 in my really nice handwriting. Um, so the, uh, the probability that we've, if we've calculated where 24 is um, on this plot, so let's just say 24 is right here. The area to the, under the curve to the right of this so this area here, we'll just shade, is between 1% and 2%. So it's not very likely, and that makes sense because, as you can see, the central tendency is towards 22 kilograms, not 24 kilograms. So the probability of a sample mean less than 24 kilograms is between 98, 99 percent, so just one minus those numbers.